All right, so I finally finished my big COVID-19 project that I started months and months ago. I'm finally done, a lot of things got in the way. Life, other projects in the house, redecorating rooms, things like that. But I finally got it finished, it's an outdoor bench. I didn't do a video about it, but I'll show some pictures on it uh, right now. But it's finally out of the garage, so I can finally get on to improving my workshop a bit more. So I'm gonna do some cleanup real quick, properly attach the boards of my workbench. Right now it's just sort of loosely placed, and so that's what we're gonna be doing. So let's get to it. It was about this time I remember that having a second set of hands can be pretty helpful. So I brought my clone out, and he helped a little bit. And it looks like my crappy buckethead shop back is playing jokes on me again. See how uneven these boards are. Uh, hopefully I can work with them and, and not be too bad. If worse comes to worse, I can just use my belt sander and just really kind of go to town with it. Hopefully I won't have to do that too much. I'm not going to worry about creating perfect joinery with this. This is just a quick and dirty workbench type of thing. Um, but anyways, I'm going to use the pocket hole jig to screw them together and clean up the edges, put it back on, probably do some rondo work on the front edge, maybe a little groove here just to catch things before they fall. Um, so yeah, so let's get to it. <laughs> Okay, so this is basically how it will end up. I need to clamp these boards flat with just some scrap boards to uh, make sure this lip isn't sticking up too much. See if I can get that flattened down without having to do a lot of sanding. Yeah, let's see. between the boards, which is good. So what I'm gonna do now is make some marks for pocket holes uh, for each board, then drill those holes out and screw it together with some, probably put some glue in there just to kind of give it that extra holding power. And uh, that's the plan, so let's get to it. See, I got all the clamps off. Now I'm going to set the Craig jig. I use my handy dandy Craig uh, tool setting wheel of goodness. Uh, basically, face joint. These are two by tens, which means they're about an inch and a half thick each. So basically, I have this right here, inch and a half to inch and a half. That says to use a one and a half inch jig setting with a two and a half inch screw. I have plenty of those. So let's get this set up. Okay, so the first thing we can do is set the board thickness to an inch and a half. Lock that in place. We're using two and a half inch long screws. So that's the highest one. Get that in place. The 
little bit down. All right, lock it in place. My clone's back. Hey, where'd he go? Now it's time to put on some glue. Spread it around. And maybe a little bit more glue. And here I'm using some plastic bags to create a layer of separation between my clamping boards and the actual workbench. That way I don't have to worry about them getting glued together. And now it's time to screw it all together. I let it sit for about an hour before taking the clamps off. Now I just have to hope it stayed flat. At first glance, it looks pretty good, relatively smooth. So let's flip it over and see how the top looks like. Considering this is pretty rough, this is pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. I'm going to trim off the edges, make them nice and square. I set my circular saw to the lower cut depth to get all the way through the boards. The left side of the saw actually hit the clamps, so I had to adjust how those were holding the straight edge. Much better. Now it's time to get the belt sander and do some work. Let me know if you'd be interested in seeing a review of Cobalt's belt sander. All right, so it's the next day. I started out using the belt sander and wasn't too happy with how it was going. Basically, it wasn't doing a whole lot, uh, even though I went through about two batteries really quickly, 15 minutes or so. It, wasn't doing a whole lot to the boards, so I decided to switch over to the orbital sander. I was having better, better luck with that. But then I started filling in some of the chips in the wood and knots, things like that with some wood filler, and got a little bit carried away and completely fill in the entire seams between the three boards, trying to get as smooth of a surface as possible. Not sure if it'll work, but figured why not try it on something like this. And so basically it's been sitting overnight, and now I have to sand it all off. So let's get to it.
All right, now that this is nice and smooth, I'm gonna break up the edge by putting a chamfer on it, as well as a little bit of a pocket along the edge just to kind of catch any rolling screws. So let's get the trim router. So the first edge I'm going to route out is actually this corner piece right here. And in order to make sure I can get a nice surface for the router to rest on, I'm going to sandwich these two pieces of scrap boards just like that above and below the board just to give me enough surface I don't have to worry about any wobbliness or anything in the router. So let's do that. All right, so I was about to put the chamfer on this edge and I realized that I should probably wait until I put in the little pocket here to catch the screws because I need to use the edge guide and if I have the chamfer here, it might not be able to sit as flush in here. It might work okay, but I'd rather just sort of not risk it and get this done first and then I can come back and hit it with the chamfer. So let's do it. After getting that done, I put the chamfer bit back on and hit the edge. After getting that done, I put it back on the drawers so I can make some cutouts for power cables. I thought of a few different ways of how I wanted to make these cutouts, but in the end I decided to use my trim router. The first cutout I made was freehand, and it came out okay but it wasn't perfectly smooth. So the next ones I used some scrap pieces as makeshift jigs to keep everything straight. And that worked out much better. After making the last cutout, I prepped the surface for finish and hit it with some spray lacquer. So satisfying. Alright, so I put on two coats of spray lacquer and let it sit overnight. I'm really happy with how it turned out. It looks nice and feels like it'll be a good workbench. So now all I have to do is put it back on top of the drawers and put everything else back on top of it. Until then, stay safe, have fun, I'll see you next time.